Hi, I'm Dean McGough, and today we're going to talk to you about assessing danger trees in BC. A lot of us think that danger trees are snags, like these. In this video, we're going to talk to you about the subtle indicators that trees have that are actually the hazards that make them dangerous, and perhaps the indicators we've been missing while trying to manage danger trees in our workplaces. There seems to be a myth that cedars will stand forever. This grey ghost cedar is a good case in point. Uh, it's growing in a flat ground, lots of water that's soaking up into the roots. And the root system, as you can see, is really rotten. All underneath, this, this root is totally disintegrating. This tree's gonna collapse. It's a high risk hazard. I look at this misshapen balsam here leaning to the left. It looks like it's been hit in the past and this wound here is, oh, actually it's all rotted right out, leaning towards our work site. Very unstable rotten. It's actually hollow. Advanced rot. This is an unstable tree. This would be enough to call this a dangerous tree for this work activity over here. A dangerous tree has two important elements. A hazard and exposure to people. The hazard could be the location of the tree or its lean. It could be the tree's been physically damaged. The tree may have overhead conditions. Or the tree could be deteriorating, whether it be its limbs, stem, or root system. And of course, it could be any combination of all these factors. Sometimes you look up a healthy tree and you'll notice a white fungus. This is a composting fungus. This indicates to you the inside of that tree is rotten. It might look healthy on the outside, but it's really rotten on the inside. Now here's an interesting tree, you have this nice big fir. You notice the taper of the tree, it just comes down and all of a sudden it bulges or buttresses at the base. Possibility we might have some root disease inside this tree. So we want to take a look at the root plate inside the drip zone. And uh, here we go, we see it right here. Here's the fungus, that's butt rot, Fiola schwinnitzii. So we've seen the buttress on this tree, we've seen the fungus. We can anticipate or expect that inside this tree is a column of rot. We don't know how big but it's usually a conical shape. So as a faller, having full control of this tree, probably a good idea to have a higher stump. Here's an example of root disease. This fallen tree doesn't have a real healthy root plate or root wad. Here's another example that you might not have noticed is a root rot pocket. All this regeneration, the small snags, the gap in an otherwise what you'd think healthy forest, these are two indicators that we have root disease. The trees around us are unstable at the next wind. Could be your safety hazard. The sap sucker have drilled extensively on this tree, just hammered it. It's again, a possibility this tree is suffering from root disease. I saw the sap sucker drilling on this tree and now I'm here, I see all this pitch flowing down the stem. This pitch right here, this rusty looking pitch, I'm thinking that this is another indicator of root disease. And to check, I'm gonna chip under the bark and see what we can find. I've chipped the bark away from this tree's roots and underneath you see this white rubbery mat. That's the fungus. This is R malaria, it's a root disease. So why is that important? Knowing that this tree's got a compromised root system, it could be rotten. The next gust of wind, you could have this tree falling over. So here's an example of what can happen when we have butt rot in a large Douglas fir tree. This tree's root system has totally rotted out, it's deformed. It was just standing perfectly balanced until the wind came over and toppled it over. Not the kind of tree we want to leave standing as a retention in our logging blocks. So we're in a riparian zone. Take the time to look around and learn from the site. Here we see a cedar. We often think cedars stand forever. Clearly that's not the case here. The rot, root system is rotted right out. So we look at this next candidate here. It's leaning into the uh, forest. It's got a root system that's decaying, just like that one. The tree's burnt out, leaning. If you were a planner, this is an opportunity to recognize the hazards and adjust your boundary so that we ensure we remove this tree because of the hazards it presents to the next cruise when we try to log this block. All right, we got this leaning tree here on the boundary leaning into a work site. 
need to assess the root plate to understand why is it leaning and is it stable. And as I look here, you can see the root system of the cedar is wrapped right over top of this balsam. This is all acting as a unit. And uh, if one tree starts to go, we could have a chain reaction with multiple trees failing. We need to manage this unit as a unit. If you cut one, you cut them all. You leave them, you leave them all. Our activities can sometimes turn a safe tree into a dangerous tree. This tree was hit hard during falling. The root system may now be broken, rendering this tree now unstable and dangerous. The cedar behind me is growing on a nurse log. You can see the root system is uh, parallel with the ground. It's elevated. It's growing on a nurse log that's quite rotten. If we disturb these root systems, we will turn this tree from a safe tree to a dangerous tree. If you're a machine operator, maybe building a road or you're the feller buncher, the hoe chucker, uh, root systems, if you look at the branches where the drip line is, the farthest branch out, drop a line down, all the roots inside that zone are what's holding this tree up. You start grubbing in here or tracking over top of these roots, you're crushing or digging up roots, you could convert what is a safe sound tree to an unstable tree. So there's four steps to managing dangerous trees in your workplace. The first begins with the site assessment overview and confirm what the activities are that you're going to be doing on this site. Second, look for suspect trees, trees that would impact the work area. Third, Make a decision based on your assessment whether or not the tree is safe or dangerous. And then fourth, and just as important as the previous, document and communicate to your crews that the assessment has been done and the hazards have been controlled or that you've communicated what needs to be done to make the site safe. I flagged this tree because it caught my attention that it was leaning. And when I explored the backside, the root has pulled away. Inside the tree, it's rotten. So this root system is compromised. This is an unstable tree, presents a hazard to our workers. This is a dangerous tree. Today, we've just scratched the surface on assessing dangerous trees in the workplace. There is so much to learn. And if you'd like to know more, regardless of who you are, or where you work in the operation, contact your supervisor. Remember, in your workplace, don't assume others have assessed your danger trees for you. You see something you're not sure about, go take a look. Your safety is important. Mm -hmm.